today, Gretchen Reed, our Senior Director of Professional Development. We also have on the line Melissa Zinder, who is our Manager of Social Media and Online Initiatives, and myself, Jen Fallon, who is Senior Manager of Program and Events. So right now I'm going to uh, pass the control over to Gretchen and we can begin. Thanks, Jennifer, our wizard of webinars. We are um, thrilled to welcome everybody who's participating today and everybody who ends up listening on the recording. And we know many of you are very experienced concurrent session presenters, and others of you are brand new to our meeting and to concurrent sessions. So those of you that are very experienced, feel free to type in some comments and suggestions uh, during the comment period at the end. And those of you that are new, feel free to put in any questions, no matter how simple they may seem. We'd love to make sure that you feel very comfortable and ready to work with our members at our annual meeting. So who are those members? Who, what kind of people can you expect to be presenting to? Uh, we have a little infographic here that tells you a little bit about our typical business officer. And our typical business officer has been working in the business office for 10 and a half years, but they actually have close to 30 years of professional experience, which tells you that the typical business officer had another profession before they switched and came over to work at a school. Often, roughly 60% of our members have either an MBA or a CPA, so they typically are experienced in fields like banking, accounting, finance, um, CFOs of other kinds of organizations, those kinds of things. So you'll find that the questions are um, thoughtful and that people are anxious for knowledge about what's special about schools and why your presentation pertains particularly to their job working in a school. We do expect about 700 or so of those business officers to show up. There will also be people who are HR directors, facilities directors, um, technology directors, heads of schools, other, other, other administrative positions in the school, and of course our valuable business partners who are working for companies that provide services to schools. You'll find that the group is very collegial. They enjoy interaction and we encourage that. We will have an introduction session at the beginning of every session that we have. Um, this group started 15 years ago as a very small group where everybody knew each other and now that we've grown, we try very hard to do whatever we can to keep that interactive feel, to keep the sharing going, to get people talking to each other. One of the things that people find valuable about this conference is, is that it's a place where they feel they finally can find people who understand their job because there's no one else at their school who does their job. Another important thing is, as I mentioned, roughly 30% of our members uh, have CPAs or are working towards them and need CPE. These concurrent sessions are the sessions where they get that CPE. So um, we do want to make sure that you know that your session will uh, qualify to have CPE awarded. So we do need you to make sure you have content in there. <laughs> and finally, just again, as I mentioned, our members are very mission driven. They've come to this profession for reasons that probably aren't, um, aren't for career climbing or making a lot of money. They're there because they love the school, they love the work environment, they believe strongly in educating children. So, um, in any way that you can tailor your presentation to respond to that and take advantage of that, we definitely encourage that. And with that, I think I'm going to let Jennifer Fallon explain to you what a concurrent session exactly is for those of you that haven't done one before. Hi. Okay. Um, we have about 40 sessions during the three days of annual meeting. They start on Monday and they wrap up on Wednesday. This year we have more concurrent sessions, meaning the actual sessions going on. So there's even more CPE, um, so that is going to be really great for all those folks there. Um, the rooms um, at the Gaylord are all pretty evenly uh, sized, so therefore you could get anywhere from 20 to 100 to 125 folks in um, all of the rooms. Um, like I said earlier, we have um, six to seven sessions going on at the same time. 
we would like for all the sessions to run approximately 75 minutes long. And as Gretchen already mentioned, um, we need to provide CPE to those accountants. And also, we um, some of the sessions that are human resource related, we allow for HRCI, which is HR credit for those who are on Director of Human Resources or even business officers who might need the HRCI credit. And um, these are some technology tips just to help you have a smoother, better session. We will be providing screens and projectors in all of the rooms. And new this year, everyone will be bringing a laptop. We just keep getting bigger and bigger, and we, it's really hard for us to supply all the laptops to everybody's um, space. So if you bring your own laptop, your presentation's loaded on there, you'll be ready to go. If you have a Mac, please bring all the um, accessible accessories that it comes with, especially the dongle, because if we have six Macs going at the same time, we may have one, but we won't have enough to fit all of you. Um, if you have any issues with um, bringing a laptop or anything, please, of course, let me know and we'll work on something for you. Um, internet, we are working on the wireless internet, and sometimes they allow for us to have wired in the speaking rooms. It, um, if it's definitely necessary, say, for instance, you have a Prezi where you definitely need the internet, please let me know. I would hate for your presentation to get ruined by any, you know, thing that we can control with the internet going down. As you know, it's all run by the hotel and we don't have control over that, so I wouldn't want your presentation to go awry, but um, just please touch base with me if it's really important and we will work on a way so that you can have a very successful presentation. Um, also, due to the fact of equipment and things like that, um, speakers or any kind of video will be hard. If you do have video um, and you want to bring speakers, we of course will let you do that and you can hook that up to have a better presentation. So again, if that's something that you're doing that's outside the realm of a regular presentation, just let us know so we can be prepared for it. And we're um, checking on microphones or, you know, possible like lavaliers for everyone to have to walk around or even stand behind a podium if you need that. Um, we're just um, still reevaluating all of our AV expenses and we'll see if that's possible. Seeing that we're getting bigger and the rooms are getting bigger, we obviously don't want your voice to, uh, you know, tire out after a few minutes um, for the 75 minutes. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. And um, yeah, we are going to be visiting the site in a couple of weeks in the mid-January. So at that point, when we get in there and we talk to each other in the rooms and see how hard it is for people to hear, we will make a decision about um, whether or not your voices will be amplified in these sessions. So um, we'll let you know. And so, Melissa, do you want to talk a little bit about how people can get their best version of slides, handouts, and an optional bio and headshot out to participants. Sure. Thanks, Gretchen. Um, so if you haven't already, um, you should download the, the annual meeting app at the link below. It's bit.ly slash MBOA 2014 app, and it'll have all the session names, um, speaker headshots, and bios in it. Um, if you haven't already, please send me all your handouts and presentations that you'll use um, during the sessions and an optional headshot and bio to me by January 31st. Um, my email is at the bottom of the slide. Also new this year, you can update any of those things after February 10th, um, once everything has been preloaded. Uh, you will get an email from Core Apps, the company that hosts our app, with instructions on how to edit your headshot handout for presentations on February 10th. Also this year, I um, it'll be mentioned on a further slide, I'll be sending out social media phrases probably later this month and so that you can just copy and paste um, one of the phrases into your own Facebook, Google, or Twitter pages so you can promote the conference and your session to your followers. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at the email at the bottom of the slide. Great. Thanks, Melissa and Jennifer. Um, as you can tell, we all are uh, anxious to help you really deliver a great presentation. So I've got a few more tips for you and just a little more information. But as we approach the meeting, feel free to get in touch with one of us, and I'll give, be giving you our contact information. We're happy to help out in any way possible. We, we know that our members value great part presentations, so we do whatever we can to make sure it goes well. And other things that you can do to make sure that your presentation goes really well are to arrive 20 minutes early at your room. 
you'll be met there by either an MBOA staff member or a designated volunteer who knows what they're doing. Um, and likely that staff member is me or one of, uh, one of the people you've just heard from or one of, uh, one of our other staff members. And we will make sure that you are connected to the projector, ready to go, whatever else you might need in the room. If for some reason that's not going well and time is closing in, um, I'll be giving you my cell phone number. You can text me with your room number and your name, please, so I know what's going on, who you are, because I don't have all your phone numbers in my phone, um, if you need more help with the setup. So um, we want to make sure that everything is set and ready to go on time. Our members work in schools. They're used to bells ringing. They like things to be on time. So we do like to start on time if possible. We realize that things happen and can't always be, but um, we do like to do that. And um, uh, we have these experienced volunteers who will also introduce you at the beginning of the session. So um, you can look for that volunteer to get you started. If for some reason there's no volunteer or staff member in your room and it's time to start, go ahead. Um, we apologize for that. We do try to have someone in the room to introduce you, but if not, go ahead. Um, encourage interaction. 75 minutes these days is a long time for people to sit quietly and listen. So just be sure to do whatever you can in your presentation to encourage people to talk with each other. Um, you'll, they'll be sitting in rows facing forward so um, they can turn to each other, they can turn to the people behind and chat with each other. Definitely leave some time on the end for questions and answers. Um, our members do generally ask a lot of questions. They're, they are interested in really doing a great job and they need to know how. Um, also, please be courteous to your fellow presenters and to the other things that are going on and for people to have time to, to have some downtime, be sure and end your session on time. Uh, and also, have fun with it. Enjoy your presentation. It's an opportunity for you to get to know our members and you, there's no reason why it shouldn't also be fun. Um, just a few more things about concurrent sessions. Again, they're 75 minutes long. That can seem kind of long. Uh, but that said, our members are, of course, used to sitting and listening in these settings. They're experienced uh, business officers. They're also typically experienced in the work world, and they're used to getting their information this way. So they don't mind getting a lot of information during that time. Uh, your slides will be more attractive if you use graphics and images. Um, details are appreciated by this kind of person that shows up in your room. So feel free to, to give details, but just keep it moving. They also don't like to be late. Lists, pros and cons, do's and don'ts, lessons learned, checklists. People love those and will download them later. So to the extent that you can provide great handouts and slides, please do. Please make sure they get onto the app we get requests for months afterwards for uh, any presentations, the handouts, the slides, those kinds of things. And if you don't put them up there, people will be asking for them. And uh, we, will, we will say, well, we, we really want to ask them and they didn't provide it. So please try to do that. Uh, timeline for getting ready for the meeting. If you haven't already done so, you do need to register yourself for the annual meeting and make your own hotel and travel arrangements. Jennifer can give you the speaker code if you don't find it in your email. She has sent it to you already, but it's there and it gives you a discount on registration. Again, as Melissa mentioned, please make sure you send anything that you want posted on the app to her by January 31st. You can edit those things after January, after February 10th when you get the instructions on how to do that, but we prefer that I mean, it's just safer if you send them by January 31st and she uploads them. Get some buzz going. Go ahead. Tweet about it, PR. Go ahead. Whatever in your networks, in your circles, we love to have some buzz going about, about different sessions. Um, it does help to get people there if you uh, actively ask people to come to your session. 
So don't be shy about doing that. We um, do appreciate it when you work to help us get people excited about the meeting. And finally, please do show up in 20, 20 minutes or plenty of time before your session starts. Uh, otherwise, we start to wonder and uh, we send out a search party for you, but we can't always locate you. So we do, um, we do know that you know, things happen, you get in a conversation, you might be running late, and we won't panic, but we do want to have you ready to go before your session is scheduled to start. So with that, let's see, here are some resources. Um, the app is there. Our website with uh, past presentations is there. And also a document that gives ideas for how to make sessions more interactive and how to make them a little more brain friendly. Um, ideas for uh, polling the group that, uh, you know, having ways to get them to talk to each other things like that. And if you need any more ideas or resources on that, please contact me because I have um, a lot of different ways that you can make your presentation more fun. Uh, for assistance ahead of time, we have all of us who are on the webinar, Jennifer, Melissa, and I, you can contact any member of the MBOA staff but most likely, if the question is pertaining to one of these things, you'll end up talking to us anyway. So if you want to get it most quickly, you go directly to Jennifer for registration, speaker code, times and rooms kinds of issues. Social media, app assistance, um, handouts, uploads, that's Melissa Zinder. For content ideas, general assistance with what kind of, who's going to be in your audience and um, how to approach it, that's me. So feel free to contact any one of us, and we'll get you to the right person. On site, what do you do if something happens on site and you want to get a hold of us? Go to the registration desk as your first option. There will be an MBOA staff person at the desk who will know how to find us. And um, just please do get in touch with one of us and let us know what's going on, what you need help with, or what is happening that you want to communicate to us. You're welcome to use to text our cell phones, but please be sure to put your name in the text because otherwise we won't know who you are. So finally, any questions or comments from experienced presenters out there? I'm going to open it up to Jennifer, and if you have um, questions or comments you'd like to share, uh, please type them in to Jennifer. Okay, I just got um, a few. I got one. What if no one comes to our session? <laughs> I've never seen it happen before ever in MBOA history, so if it does, you'll be the first. <laughs> yes, session. you will be the first. <laughs> yeah. You will be the first. And also, please know that we occasionally pick speakers that we know may not draw a big crowd because we know that there are certain topics that are only going to appeal to certain groups of people, but that those groups are going to be really appreciative if we do cover them. Um, an example would be last year we had a session about the religious exemption for certain schools and certain uh, HR laws. We didn't have a lot of people in the session, but we knew that going into it. We picked the session deliberately, um, and the people that were in there were very appreciative of the opportunity to get that session. And they had a great session because they were able to sit and chat with each other and discuss things. So. Um, don't feel like a low number means an unsuccessful presentation. It doesn't. Um, and, and furthermore, a rather large presentation sometimes is not as effective. So um, numbers in the room is not, is not, um, not, not the ultimate determinant of uh, the success of a concurrent session. If you get nobody, maybe, but we've never had that happen. <laughs> what else, Jennifer? Okay. Um, someone said maybe a good idea is to bring their own personal hotspot just in case. It's highly recommended if you have one. Um, most when we were there last time, a lot of phones did work on like a 4G network, but I mean, so that, way that a hotspot could work. So if you do have that and would like to bring it, then um, feel free. Um, I received a tip from someone that said, when possible, get a conversation going with the group. It is always a lot more fun and effective. 
that's a very good uh, suggestion. So thank you for that. Um, let me just see. If you had asked me a personal question about your laptop or asked a question about the projector, I'll just get back to you um, on another email just to um, so we don't bog down the session. And uh, that's all I have. Okay. Anyone else? Any other questions? Anyone else? Throw it out there. Um, with that, I think uh, that we will conclude the webinar and really again stress that we appreciate your time and commitment to MBOA and to schools and to business officers. And if you have any questions or comments, just feel free to get in touch with us. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.